Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Woo! Ladies, you did it. You get your one day this year. <laughs> you get five minutes out of the day, and then you got to go right back to work. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> and men, we appreciate y'all. This is also your day because you're going to be blessing these amazing ladies, right? Oh, man. Y'all give these moms a huge hand. Oh, wow. These moms are awesome. Pastor Ben, I am so in awe. I just can't believe you give me this opportunity. I'm still pinching myself. And I am the least likely person to speak to you on Mother's Day because I'm 54. And the greatest joy that I had dreamt my whole life that I would have, I didn't have. I'm not a mom. I'm not. I prayed and prayed and begged God. But you know, it's not my will, it's his will, because God so knows what he's doing, because if you had any idea how crazy I am, my children, <laughs> there would be a younger version of me arguing with me, talking just like me, and the world can't handle that. So God knows what he's doing. But you know what? Um, I didn't, it's okay that I didn't birth a child. God gave me kids. I'm going to share with you a little bit how God gave me kids, because you're not going to believe how awesome God is. Oh, God is so awesome. Anyway, my life's a miracle, not just the fact that God made me a mentoring mom, but I'm standing here before you today. My real mother, my birth mother, she couldn't keep me. I don't know her story. It's private. It's sealed. But on my two-day-old birthday, from being two, two days old, these amazing people, World War II veteran who fought at the Battle of the Bulge, weren't able to have children, my mom and dad, Aaron and Dur, Aaron Glenn, Aaron and Durwood, <laughs> Aaron Durwood Glenn and my mom Wanda adopted me in their 40s. Daddy lived to be 90. Mom's 96. And she is so stubborn, God is not ready for that in heaven at all. <laughs> like, oh Lord, God is working on that woman. So no, God's, you know, you know, my, my kids know. Anyway, my life's a miracle because I was given parents, and not just regular parents. I mean, parents that led me to know Jesus. Whew, I got radically saved at 14, and I have been on fire for Jesus. As y'all can tell, I'm a worshiper. I was a worship pastor, so normally when I'm on the platform, I'm on a platform. So I get to speak to y'all, so please forgive the hands. I'm just naturally worshiping. I'm, the worship pastor's laughing because he understands. But my motto has always been, be happy, be helpful, and be kind. And that is so simple, like kinder, kindergarten. I think I probably learned it in kindergarten. But hasn't that taken us through life? That I don't have everything in the whole wide world, but I'm happy. I don't need all that garbage. I'm happy. I choose to be happy. Now, whatever my lot that was taught me to say, it is well. I'm a happy person because Jesus has made me happy. And to be help, helpful. Because if you're not helpful, what good are you? Okay? People need some help. And if you're not going to be help, helpful, get out of the way and let somebody else help. Okay? And be kind. How many times have you been at the grocery store? You're tired. And you didn't even look up to tell the person behind the counter, how are you today? Is your day going good? I hope you're having a good day. Just a tiny bit of kindness, it can make somebody's day and you don't even realize it. Just, just being considerate and kind. Those are world-changing concepts that we learned in kindergarten. But that's my motto. I want to thank God for my hus husband, Jerry. Jerry Wave, married 28 years. I gave him that gray hair. <laughs> he had this gorgeous dark hair. <laughs> He's scared to death what I'm going to say right now. <laughs> okay, so um, he's embarrassed because I'm in holy jeans. We had a fight over this, okay? I'm serious. Tina, you are not wearing those jeans in church. I am too. This is who I am. You know, this is such a marriage. We're so real. We're so real. And uh, as you can see, I'm a hand, handful. In Texas, I'm a handful means I'm not boring. <laughs> I'm not boring at all. I'm sorry. My husband has no idea ever what I'm going to say or do. But anyway, um, I just want to tell you guys, I have the same challenges y'all have. We're all walking this earth. Nothing's perfect, okay? 
we're all learning. We're all making mistakes. We're all getting God's forgiveness. Some days I have to ask God's forgiveness several times a day, a lot more than I want to admit that I have to ask for it. Um, when I was born um, and beginning to talk, I stuttered really bad. I still stutter, so y'all forgive me. If I get excited and I stutter, that's just that Mel Tillis inside of me. Anybody know Mel Tillis? I dated you. Ah, if you know Mel Tillis, you're my age. <laughs> Everybody young is going, huh? Tillis what? <laughs> it's an old country singer, okay? Your mom and daddy tell you about him. But he uh, never stuttered when he sang, so I think that's why I love singing. From age four, I stuttered so bad that when I sang, I didn't stutter. And being picked on and bullied, it just made me more determined. I didn't stop talking. I just kept stuttering straight through it, because you're not going to stop me. I have that personality. I can't take credit for it. God just made me that person. But he made you that person, too. So recognize your gifts, especially you moms. Woo. Okay, we're going to do a little bit of Q&A because I want to get to know y'all. So don't be shy like first service. I hope y'all outdo them and answer me, okay? So when I say, ladies, who are my brand new millennial moms? Who are my millennial moms? Like you're just having children. Your, your kids are under five. Oh, my prayers are with y'all. Woo! Oh, that's not easy. It's not easy. So you're, you're a grandmother to a m millennial baby. No. Okay, Any, anybody else? Okay, oh, over here? No? All right, well, y'all can tell me. Okay, who are my professional mothers? I mean, you're juggling it, you're at baseball, you're at soccer, you've got the snacks for the kids, and I mean, you're in the van, you're on time, and you're all together. My pro mom, come on, children are pointing at their moms. That's a beautiful thing. Wear it as a badge. If you're a pro mom, hallelujah, if you're a pro mom, you are highly favored among women. You know, you're probably a pro mom and you don't even recognize it or realize it. But people on the outside, I'm a mentoring mom. And I want to introduce you to my kid. Like I said, I didn't get to have children the regular way. God had to give me a baby. After praying and praying and praying and God closed the door on adoption. And it just was like, God, what are you doing? And I was going to church in Cleburne, Texas, is a little south of Fort Worth. And um, this 12-year-old lived near me. And he's just the cutest kid you ever seen. Glasses. I mean, fun, sweet-spirited. He just fit into my family so well. Needed a ride to church every once in a while. And I decided he's my kid. Let me introduce him to you. His name's Nathan. Nathan's up there in the corner. Nathan's here right now. Nathan, wave. Nathan's my baby. Nay, nay. I call him my baby, nay, nay. <laughs> I love you so much. You have blessed my life, and you do not know. Your text messages, your emails, for me to be a mentor to you, you have no idea what a blessing you are to me. You will never know how amazing you are and how you bless my life. God is just given me a treasure in you. And then came along Carrie. Now, Carrie is this gorgeous woman that God gave Nathan. He, he is a highly favored man. And we were on the Omni something links or whatever. Jerry, what were we playing over here and kind of close? Uh, well, Carrie and I, as you can tell, we were playing. <laughs> we were taking pictures. Jerry's playing golf. And then God gave this amazing couple, the cutest kid ever born, Jax. And Jax is a handful, which means he's not boring. Jax is your typical four-year-old. And, you know, Nathan and Carrie worry. Is my kid's crazy? I'm going, of course he's crazy. He's four. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Give yourself a break. Your kid is supposed to be bouncing off the walls and nuts crazy. He's a four-year-old. He's a toddler. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. But uh, I have this incredible family that God has blessed me with, and I thank God for them every day. Aren't they gorgeous? I'm sorry, I just have to pray, brag on them a little bit. You know, uh, anybody here a mom, I'm speaking to moms now, do you have children in your life that consider you a friend, they call you, and you have a beautiful relationship, you tell them you love them, you encourage them, you're the counselor? Don't take that for granted, y'all. That's beautiful. I didn't have that. I have an amazing mom. She's incredible. But there's no affection so I didn't have, I had some unrealistic expectations. 
Men and women, if you're here today and you have unrealistic expectations, it's okay. Because I didn't ever get the lovey-dovey and the friendship like Jerry's mom. Okay, Jerry's mom. God gave me Jerry's mom. You can give this woman a frog in a box. Am I lying? I am not lying. You can give her a frog in a box and she will say, I have always wanted a frog in a box. <laughs> Thank you. And she'll put it up on the, this is my frog in a box. Jerry and Tina gave it to me. I have the best kids. And it's genuine and sweet and real. Because she will say it over and over. I have the best kids. I'm so blessed. Well, I don't have that. But that's okay. I've got it in Jesus, right? Jesus tells me that. I love you. I'm proud of you. You're beautiful. You're worthy. It's okay that if you don't have that counselor in your life, you've got Christ. So let go of those unrealistic expectations. Life, life is life. It's not going to be all neat and clean. The messiest lives are the best lives to me. They're the, they're the ones that are not boring. They're the ones that we've been forgiven much, so we love much. That's why I tell people, don't judge my praise. Because I praise a lot. Because you don't know what I've been forgiven. I've been forgiven of things that I could never forgive myself for, but God did. <sighs> and he wiped them clean. And they're gone. Isn't God awesome? So give yourself a break and see yourself, especially you ladies. See yourself how God sees you. You don't have to be a supermodel like me. <laughs> there's no size. There's no hair. There's no makeup. There's no clothing. You are valuable and beautiful. You are a treasure, ladies. See yourself the way Jesus sees you. Be confident in that. Know who you are. Know the truth. See yourself how Jesus sees you. Let go of those unrealistic expectations. Whew. And God will just birth something. What was the song? He makes beautiful things. He makes beautiful things out of us. Oh, that was, you couldn't have been more perfect, guys. Like the, in the Holy Spirit, good. Wow. Just so good. Okay, I'm going to jump ahead. Uh, tell you what, I was talking to you about being a mentoring mom. It is so amazing because I don't have to pay for their college. <laughs> I can also spoil them and let them watch movies they shouldn't see. Um, like when The Matrix came out, I had surround sound. <laughs> I had the big screen TV. And Aunt Tina, nobody's letting us. My mom won't let me see The Matrix. Oh, come to my house. We just won't tell your mom. What your mama don't know, don't hurt her. I asked forgiveness for that later. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. I honestly did not. Um, but, you know, um, being a ment ment mentoring mom, I didn't do everything right. Like, I shouldn't have let them watch. Uh, what was the one I let them watch? <laughs> Mike Myers. <laughs> Boys laugh at the craziest things. Nathan, I, wouldn't, I never knew what you were laughing about because I couldn't figure it out, but boys laugh at the craziest things. We'd watch these funny movies. But par parenting, there's no perfect parenting. So moms, this morning, you might be feeling guilty. You've read all the books. You've watched all the videos. You're online. You're on Pinterest. What does this mom do? What does that mom do? I want to be this good, good mom. And that's beautiful. That's awesome. But give yourself a break because none of us are perfect, right? And your kids are going to be okay. The reason I know your kids are going to be okay, let me show you parenting. Parenting then. Okay, here we go. Parenting then, this is how I was, I was raised. Okay, guys? I'm not kidding you. I'm still here. Okay, we sat on the toolbox and held on with fingertips. Daddy's going 50 miles an hour. How are we still here? And But, but I'm not this is good, though. Look how good they have it now. Look, the cushion. Oh, my goodness, the Cheerios aren't crushed down in there, you know. It's still clean. And that baby cute. Oh, my gosh, that's a cute baby. Just want to do that to the baby. Okay, so then and now, this is just some parenting, okay? Okay, uh, this is now. See, when you go swing at the park, you have the ADA ergonomically, you have the seatbelt. I rode roller coasters at Six Flags that didn't have that kind of safety feature. <laughs> I just had a little bar, okay? This is me. I am so this kid. Do you see this kid jumping out of the swing? 
I didn't stay in a swing. I got as high as I could get and jumped out. And that's why I went to church. How many people can t- tell me? I was born in the 60s. My mother was so ashamed. I have an old, older brother that I, I did all this with. Remember that, what was that red stuff they put on your sores and then put the Band-Aids on it? Okay, and remember how the, you'd go to church where I'd have it all over me. Oh, mother would say, I promise we don't abuse this child. I'm walking in there with one big Band-Aid because that's how I live. Okay, this, let me, here's some more then and now. And I love this. This is my favorite thing about then and now. Now, this kid does not know how good he's got it. That water is crystal clear, delicious, purified, probably cold because he has a super mom. Because look at his outfit. I mean, he's got the best soccer outfit on, the haircut. My mother cut my hair. Are you kidding? This is, but this is, when I said, Mama, I need a drink of water. (laughs) Go to the garden house. Anybody else? Is anybody else a garden, garden hose kid? Oh, hallelujah. I'm, y'all are my people. <laughs> and we're still here. Nothing wrong, again, with parenting. I just pray this kid knows how good he's got it. I pray he thanks his mom. And mamas, maybe you need to tell him how good you've got it. You need to thank mama for being so good to you. Mama had to drink out of a garden hose. <laughs> Whatever challenges motherhood brings, you guys, God promises us, those who raise children, to love and fear God. Those parents, those parents are going to prosper. Those kids are going to prosper. You've planted that seed of Christ, of the love for God, and it will grow. I, I promise you, it will grow. In this world... I can't watch TV anymore. There's so much secular humanism, and I get angry, and I speak to the TV, and the TV don't hear me. (sighs) But it's pulling at us. It's pulling at me. And sometimes i got to shut it off and say, God, mm -mm, mm -mm. it's trying to rob my peace, trying to rob my joy. Don't let it, guys. Know who you are in Jesus. Sometimes you just got to kind of separate yourself a second and say, you know, I don't need that. I don't need that. It's, it's, if it's hurting your spirit, it's making you negative and critical, get rid of it, okay? That's for guys and girls. That's free. That's just a nugget. That's for Jerry, too. Jerry's got critical spirit really bad. What do I say, Jerry? Get rid of it. Anybody an empty nester mom? So we said the pro moms. We said the millennial moms. Empty nesters. Okay, hallelujah. Isn't that fun? Don't you love that there's no kids in your house anymore? It's your house now. (laughs) Anybody else? Oh, I love that. How about spoiler mamas? Any spoilers? Now, that's with kids home or with kids here. And you say, don't, don't, don't tell daddy. Yeah, but you spoil them. Like, you know their favorite dish. You know everything that they love. And if you hear they're coming, you've made it. I've got your favorite. Oh, man, I love those moms. You're highly favorite of God, girl. I love that. Well, I want to recognize all the women here because there's three different kinds of women. Well, more than that. But let me just do a Q&A. Please holler out. Who are my faithful moms? And I mean faithful to God moms. Anybody feel faithful to God? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Woo, that's beautiful. In the Bible, the faithful women, uh, one, of the faith, one of the stories was Lois and Eunice. They raised Timothy. And Timothy was mentored by Paul and later led the church at Ephesus. Well, Lois and uh, Lois and Eunice, my brain, I'm 54. Lois and Eunice didn't have a God godly man in the house. So women, if you're thinking, I can't raise my kids to know the Lord, I don't have a godly man in my house. Mm-mm, no excuse. The Bible's got a story right here. Lois and Eunice, they taught him to love and fear God. And guess what? Those women... They trusted God. They were faithful, faithful women. Okay, prayerful women. Prayerful women? Who are, who are my prayer warriors? Woo, you're praying for your kids. Man, I tell you, do not discount that. Kids, I hope you know your moms are praying for you. Do y'all see these hands? I love these prayerful women. In the Bible, Hannah wanted a baby, and she prayed and said, If you give me a baby, I'm going to dedicate him back to you. So God did give Hannah a baby. Guess who? She gave him. 
Samuel. And he became a high priest, a prophet, and a judge in is Israel. He became one of the most influential godly figures in the Bible just because Hannah prayed. So be a Hannah. So be a Lois and a Eunice. Be faithful. Be a Hannah. Be prayer prayerful. But where's my Esthers? Where's my courageous women? I mean, lion, rawr, not lying, but lion. I mean, my women, <laughs> my Texas accent came out. Where's my fierce, like, lioness, lioness kind of women? Where's my cur- cur- courageous women? Oh, come on. It's like, come on, be courageous. Yes, I see you. Hallelujah for you. You get $50, Pastor. Will you give her 50 <laughs> Just kidding. I'm sorry, you need to know the truth. I'm going to be preaching on that later. I'm sorry that was deceitful. Please forgive me. <laughs> it's easier to ask for forgiveness. No, but Esther, even when God had promoted her, and even when her life was at risk, she saved her people. She could have been killed, but she saved her people because she was courageous. I know you women are here. I know you're courageous. I know you're prayerful. And I know you're faithful. You don't have to tell me because you're here. So I already know it. Be encouraged. I love that about y'all. Stay encouraged. Don't lose it. Okay, moms. Now here's some more (laughs) Q&A. Let's talk about gifts. So which moms got the greeting card? Any mom get a greeting card from Mother's Day? Okay, that's a good, that's a nice thing. Did anybody get a homemade greeting card? Homemade? Those are the best. Oh, those are the best. Okay, what mom's got flowers or plants or something beautiful? Don't you love that? I love flowers and plants. Love it, love it. Which mom's just got the what I give, which is breakfast with my mom or dinner or lunch, and that's what mama gets? Yeah, you know, that's okay, because if that's what mama likey, that's what mama giddy. Okay. <laughs> You have to know your mom. Maybe you got her a little trinket that she collects. You know, like Jerry's mama loves frogs in boxes. (laughs) Why now? (laughs) Winnie would, she'd be going, I do not. She would be telling me right now. But one of the things that women love to get, and we, we really do love to get it, is expensive perfume. Anybody get their mom any perfume? I mean, the good kind. Is that what you got? Nathan, you didn't even know. You didn't know I was preaching on perfume. You, and you seriously bought that for her. Oh, man, this is how I know these are my kids. <laughs> I want to speak to y'all today about perfume, the sweet aroma of praise. Anybody else get some beautiful per- per- perfume? Let me tell you about what I love about per- perfume is whenever somebody puts on perfume, the strongest, that expensive kind, and they walk in the room, and even after they walk out, What do you still smell? What lingers? The perfume. Even that old lady perfume, like that private collection when I was growing up. That really strong stuff was in my house for three days after mom had a bridge party. (laughs) Couldn't get rid of that. But let me tell you why God feels per perfume is important. And that's what I want to speak to you about today is being a sweet aroma. Being a sweet aroma to God. 2 Corinthians 2, 14 and 15. I'm not going to read the whole text. I'm just going to read a beautiful part of this text in 2 Corinthians. In the New Living Translation, it says, But thank God. Whew, thank God. Mm. Now he uses us to spread the knowledge of Christ everywhere. Like a sweet perfume, our lives are Christ-like fragrance rising up to God. Wow. Wow. Did you know that? Your life, and you know, your life just the way it is. I don't mean your good life when you're pretending to be good. I mean your life, your life loving Jesus. You're a sweet aroma. And it it goes on in that text to say to some people, Christians don't smell good. But because the world doesn't always want to hear the truth. But the truth is important. So God, why does God require perfume? Why does he like perfume? Did you know the word says even our prayers have an aroma? Our prayers are so sweet to God that he keeps them in golden bowls in heaven. I found this text and I was like, wow, I've read this a number of times and it never stuck out to me. But in Revelation 5, 8, when we're reading about the the, 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 the lamb, worthy is the lamb who was slain. And the lamb comes to take the scroll. And it says that the elders fell down before the lamb. 
and they had incense. Well, you know, incense is like a perfume. And the incense, which is the prayers of God's people. I wonder what my golden bowl looks like, because I'm Texan. So I pray for traffic. Oh, God, you got to get me out of this traffic. I prayed this morning for a flight here, because my flight didn't go like it was supposed to go. I didn't make the 530. I had to rebook and make the 650, and my husband was losing his mind, because that's he earned that gray hair. But I prayed, and uh, that prayer is in the golden bowl. What does your golden bowl look like? Man, it's bigger than what you realize. It really honestly is. God keeps our prayers in a golden bowl. It's a sweet aroma to him. It's a worshipful act. I tell you, just to sit and pray and just just spend time with God and let him know. You know, God doesn't require, he's not um, narcissistic. God's like, yeah, praise, praise me. God says, praise, praise me because it makes him bigger in your life. Did you know that? When you praise God, He's getting bigger in your life because you're realizing he is great. He is worthy. He can do it. He is all these things. And he just gets bigger and bigger in your life the more you praise him. That one's a free nugget, too. That's not about perfume. But that's why God, our, our, our praise is a sweet aroma. I'm going to speak to you about Mary of Bethany. Mary of Bethany is such a unique woman that her story was recorded in all four books of the Gospels, Mark Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's in every gospel. And even Jesus himself said, this woman will be remembered forever because of her worshipful act. And, you know, at the time, Mary needed to touch Jesus. Ladies, you've been there. You're tired. You've had it. Things are not going good. And you just need to break through. And you don't care who knows it. You don't care what it looks like. You are breaking through to Jesus. And that's what Mary of Bethany did that day at Simon's house. Let me read you this text. Oh, this is powerful. Wow. Mary of Bethany. Mark chapter 14, verses 3 3 through 9. This is in the New Living. Because I I like to read out of that because it's kind of how I talk without the Texas accent. In Mark it says, Meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany, was in Bethany at the home of Simon. Now, Simon is a man he had just previously uh, healed who had had leprosy. And while he was eating, a woman came in. And she had a beautiful alabaster box, an alabaster jar, expensive perfume made from the essence of nard. She broke open the jar, poured the perfume over Jesus' head. And there were people at the table. Did they say, whoo, you go, Mary? No, they were indignant. And all of a sudden, they got a little self-righteous. Well, she could have sold that bottle of perfume. I'm using my Texas accent now because disciples are Texan. She could have used that perfume, and she could have, that would have given a year's wages. We could have given it to the poor. How self-righteous is that? Oh, come on, guys. She's worshiping. She's hungry. She needs Jesus, but their eyes were closed. It wasn't their fault. I don't judge them harshly. I've been there. I've been critical. Jesus said, leave her alone. Why criticize her for doing such a good thing to me? You will always have the poor among you. And you can help them whenever you want to, but you're not always going to have me. Jesus knew what was going to happen. She has done this so she could anoint, and she, I'm sorry, but she has done what she could and has anointed my body for the burial ahead of time. They didn't understand that yet, guys. Don't judge them. Then he said the most powerful words, I tell you the truth. You got to know the truth, right? This is not a lie. Jesus is going, guys, he's like holding their face. Listen to me. I tell you the truth. You need to hear this. When Jesus says that, you need to hear it. Whenever the good news is spread and preached throughout the world, this woman's deeds will be remembered and discussed. And we're talking about her today, Mother's Day 2018. Wow. That was about her. She didn't care what people thought about her. She didn't care. In Luke, it goes on and it talks more about this 
woman Mary. And I've heard scholars argue, this is Mary of Magdalene. No, it's Mary of Bethany. I'm going to set the record straight because the word of God, God is not a God of confusion. The word of God is going to clear it up who this woman was. Anyway, it elaborates, elaborates a little bit more. And it says more of what, you, of, of what Mary did. She not only poured it over his head, it says in Luke, um, this is Luke 7. It says she knelt behind the feet of Jesus, weeping, and her tears fell on his feet, and she wiped him with her hair. And this is beautiful. She kept kissing his feet like she knew what was about to pierce him. How could she have known? She didn't know. And she put perf- perfume on them. And a Pharisee, he said to himself, now this is important. He didn't say it out loud, but he said to himself, if, the, if Jesus knew what kind of woman was touching him, <laughs> you know, the eye roll. You can see the eye, eye roll in the text. And get this, Jesus answered his thoughts. Whew, I love that Jesus, he read his mind. He read his mail right then and there. And he told him a story, and we call it a par- parable, but let's just call it a story. And this is why you don't judge people's praise. He said, let's just say that a man gave 500 pieces of gold to this man, and he gave 50 pieces to this man, and neither one could repay the debt. Both of them like, I'm sorry, I can't repay. But the man was, that gave it was so generous, he said, I forgive you of your debt. Who's going to love more? Who's going to love more? And Jesus said that. Who's going to love more? Well, of course, Simon said, well, the one that was forgiven more. And Jesus said, exactly, exactly. See, oh, this is so good. I'm going to get to it. Sorry, guys. He said, look at this woman kneeling here. When I entered your home, you didn't offer me water to wash the dust off my feet, but she's washed them with her tears. Wow. And then she wiped them with her hair. You didn't greet me with a kiss, but from the time I first came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. And you neglected the courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head, but she's anointed me with rare perfume. And I tell you, her sins, and even though they're many, have been forgiven because she has shown me much love. Wow. Think about times in your life, women, you know, girl. Ladies, I'm there. There's times in my life I get busy being a mom and mentoring my mom and working and working in church too and wearing all those hats. We forget to worship. This is the same Mary. Now, this is how I know it was not Mary Magdalene. It was actually Mary of Bethany. Because in John 11, verse, uh, verses 1 and 2, it says that the man named Lazarus was sick. This is Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Lazarus was sick and lived in Bethany with his sisters, Mary and Martha. And this is the Mary who poured, who later poured the expensive perfume on the Lord's feet and wiped them with her hair. Because Mary was a true worshiper. Now, here's where I really identify with Mary and Martha. Because women, you're here too. How many times have you been so busy serving God that you forget to worship him? Because you're so busy working for him. It's easy. Okay, so in the Bible, all the disciples are out, and probably there was a lot of people following them, not just the disciples, but they come in on Simon's house later in the Bible. This is in Luke 10. And uh, here comes everybody into Mary and Martha's house. Whoo! She's going to have to feed them, right? Have y'all ever fed more than 10 people? (laughs) Isn't it easy? (laughs) Kill me now. Oh. Well, first of all, I have to clean my house first because I want people to believe that my house is always clean. <laughs> oh, I keep it real. I keep it real. I just let people come in and see how I live. I'm, I'm not going to live a lie. I'm sorry, but I will clean it for you. I'm sorry. I just want you to know it's real. But so here's Martha, and she is in there cooking up a storm, and she looks around and she says, where's Mary? Well, guess where Mary was? She's at the feet of Jesus. She's worshiping. And Martha did what I would do. Jesus, I am here cooking. And she even used the words, this is not fair. 
I am cooking, and Mary is sitting at your feet worshiping. You tell her to get up and come in here and help me cook. That seems reasonable. And Jesus, you're thinking Jesus would say, get in there, girl. Go get that food. I'm hungry. But uh, (laughs) Jesus knew this. That's what the word says. Just read, I'll just read you the very last part. Jesus said, oh, my dear Martha, you're worried and upset over all these details. There's only one thing worth being concerned about, and Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. Let her worship me, basically, is what he was saying, because I'm not going to be here for much longer, but I will come back to you resurrected in a greater way. And it was these women, these amazing women, that got to see Jesus resurrected too and got to see him alive and living. But during this time, she took her time to worship him. Ladies, be encouraged. When you need your time, you take advantage of your help helpers in your life. Maybe your helpers is your spouse or your older kids or your parents. Take that time, ladies. Be encouraged. Go do what you need to do to get refueled. So you can be the best woman of God, mother, the best wife. Because it's not easy, right, girls? We make it look easy, but they don't see us crying (laughs) in our car. Or like Carrie, I'm going to tell on Carrie. (laughs) Uh, Recently, she had to hide in her car. Uh, Her four, four, four four-year-old was driving her crazy, and she handed it to Nathan, handed it, handed (laughs) Jax. He's, he's, he's like an it, because he's four. <laughs> Handed this kid to Nathan. It's, I'm done. And she took a picture of herself eating chocolate donuts in her car. <laughs> Can I testify? Every mother has been there. And I, I taught her to eat those chocolate donuts. Baby, you're going to look, you're going to look, look like me. You got to, no, no, baby, no, 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 no. But uh, I, my time is, I don't want to go over my time, but I just want you to be encouraged to know the truth. Remember when Jesus said, I tell you the truth. Women, especially us, we get lied to by fashion magazines. Those pictures aren't real. Those, are, those aren't real women. They're airbrushed. They don't look like that in real life. They don't wake up with their hair. Oh, my goodness. What a lie. Women, know the truth. You are valuable and beautiful and confident and amazing women. You can do this. You work jobs. You raise kids. You, you have a hus- husband that when he needs help and he's not cleaning the house, uh, men clean the house for your wives. <laughs> mine, mine does because I won't do it. <laughs> he won't let me hire the maid that I know I need. <laughs> but women, <laughs> keep it real. Keep it real. Testify. But ladies, um, I tell you the truth, when Jesus says those words, he said them more than 70 times in the New Testament. Why do you think he said it? Because the world tries to lie to us. And if we believe that lie, what happens to us? We lose our joy. We lose our faith. We lose our hope. We lose our peace. It's the the enemy's tool. So know the truth. Let the truth set, set you free. And what's the truth? Jesus, the way, the truth. And the life. Whew, isn't that good? Simple, right? I love that Jesus puts the cookies on the bottom shelf. Wow. You don't have to be a scholar or know the Greek. I mean, it's beautiful. We just went to a wedding where they prayed in Hebrew. I could feel the Holy Spirit. Something about that language. Whoo, hallelujah. That was when they prayed that prayer. Mess- messianic Jewish wed- uh, wedding. I was about to fly out of that place. It was gorgeous. But we need to know, like what Pastor Ben said, know the truth. God so loved the world. When you read these scriptures, put your name in there. God so loved Tina that he gave his only son. Okay? When you're reading that word, put your name in there. You claim those words. Because God did it for you. He gave his son for you. He so loved you. He gave his one and only son. Isn't that gorgeous? How beautiful. How simple, how amazing is God? That's the truth. Ladies, I just hope you feel encouraged. Men, I hope you feel encouraged to encourage your girls. 
Okay, your daughters, your wives, your mothers. I mean, you may have older mothers. They need encouragement too. We don't ever stop needing encouragement. And when we say, does this look good? What's the answer? Oh, I love y'all. Y'all know the truth. (laughs) Don't say, do you think it looks good? That is the wrong answer. (laughs) Don't answer my question with a question. Say, yes, baby. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Y'all, ladies, be the example. Show your kids how to pray. Be real. Let them see that you're struggling at times and how God's providing. They don't need to know all the details to make them worry. But let them realize, mama needed a job and she got one. God answered my prayer. Let them, we needed this and God supplied. Be real. Let them know what God is doing in your life so that you're raising godly children that are trusting and believing that Jesus is, I tell you the truth, Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. The Word of God is so amazing. I'm going to read you what John 16 in the Message Bible. This is, I love the message. It's kind of groovy. It's kind of my hippie Bible. It says, uh, John 16, 31 through 33. Ooh, I love the word, unshakable. Ooh. Jesus told his followers, I've told you all this, all the whole story of salvation is what he's talking about. So that trusting me, you will be unshakable and assured deeply at peace. Because in this godless world, you're going to continue to experience difficulties. They're not going to stop. But take heart. Oh, don't you love the take heart? I have conquered. I have overcome. But I've conquered the world. So you've got nothing to worry about. God's I got this. Isn't that awesome? You know, this morning, if you know Jesus, be encouraged to just be that person, that light on a hill that just where that light cannot be um, shut down, where there's just no way to shut down the light of Jesus in your life. Let people see it. Be unshakable. And if you're thinking to yourself, I want to know God. I want to know Jesus. You know, I'm not asking you to change. The Holy Spirit will do what he needs to do in your life. He, he, Jesus accepts you just exactly the way you are right here, changing nothing. He loves you. He died for you. And it's just a really simple prayer. And maybe in those of you who've prayed this prayer, encourage your friends and your loved ones to pray it, to know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. And you're thinking, personal Lord and Savior? It's just very easy. It's just Jesus come into my heart. Change me. Forgive me. First, more important, forgive me. And then receive that forgiveness. And begin to speak to God. You will hear from him. I promise you will. You will hear from him. If you need to know more about that, I know Pastor Ben and their staff and their prayer warriors are here to lead you and to guide you and to put a Bible in your hands and to put the word of God in you where you can be unshakable Fearless, courageous. Ladies, be prayerful and faithful. And I just hope you feel more encouraged than you ever have. Let your life be a sweet aroma of praise, pleasing to God. Thank y'all so much. What an honor. What an honor to speak to y'all.